Tonight we are uh, honoring, uh, through the Chesney Medal, somebody who's made such a contribution to understanding the changing nature of war. Somebody who uh, not only wrote about it, but, but created a, a change in the strategy and put it to, into practice in two pretty sharp end operations. So for the 35th award of the Chesney Medal, I'm delighted that we've been able to make it tonight, and I'm delighted that General Petraeus has been able to join us uh, to receive this award. And so I'm going to ask now uh, General Sir Graham Lamb to formally make the award. General Graham. For it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy go away. But it's thank you, Mr. Atkins, when the band begins to play. And it's Tommy that this and Tommy that and throw him out the brute. But it's savior of his country when the guns begin to shoot. Now, why, you might ask yourself, would three eminently respectable institutions, such as the Royal United Services Institute, the Royal Armouries, and Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress, ask a minor general, known, according to Wikipedia, for blasphemous plain speaking, <laughs> to say a few words in such a gathering? Well, probably because unlike most, I speak ill of the dead. Many of us are here because we have enjoyed a common upbringing, an education schooled in the harsh environment of Thomas Hobbes's world, a world in which there are no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all continual fear and danger of violent death. And the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, a world which has and continues to be beset by war and reckless conflict, a world in which there is little sight of peace in our time, a world racked by wicked problems, but a world, as Roger Kipling reminded us, that would be an ill place for weaponless dreamers if evil men were not now and then slain. We are in the company tonight of men and women who have met with that challenge, who for decades never faltered from their duty to call out when so directed, whoever, whenever, onto whatever field of battle to defend our people, their prosperity, and our way of life to relentlessly pursue without fear or favor those who would murder our hopes, instill terror, and attempt to change at their whim what our two great nations still stand for. Few can match my old comrade in arms, General David Petraeus, in this endeavor. He was an extraordinary soldier, courageous, generous, and successful, a reluctant but impressive, polished, and effective diplomat, and an all too short director of the Central Intelligence Agency, from which his departure leaves us all the poorer for it. President Eisenhower acclaimed of the CIA's founder, Colonel Wild Bill Donovan, as the last hero. Maybe it had been time for the next, but we'll never know. For now the king is dead, long live the king. For General David, in his new life, will continue to make a deep and lasting impact on both sides of the Atlantic, intellectually and practically, in our understanding of conflict and amongst our wounded and veterans, and always remind us, here dead lie we because we did not choose to live and shame the land from which we sprung. To be sure, 
Life is nothing much to lose, but young men think it is, and we were young. This evening is to General Petraeus' past, not future achievements that we gather, to recognize his leadership, friendship, courage, and comradeship, that his was and will still be a never-ending story of duty, service, sacrifice. And it is for that legacy, his nerve to risk, his courage to trust, that we collectively acknowledge our deepest respect and immeasurable gratitude and simple everlasting friendship forged in forgotten battles captured in this medal. General David, my old friend, it's a great privilege.